raised me to be mouthy and mighty, schooled me with slant looks and girdle grips, <laughs> made talk like oatmeal to coat my ears against the lurching of menfolk who would prefer my meat to Murray's. They stood between me and the precipice. Church women and pinochle sinners gave me my tutelage and fatherlessness. Their tongues, commanded by a ruthless orgy of verbal desire, broke my mind into seven spheres. They were good women, with demons in their pocketbooks. They'd hand me a tissue or a mint, and for a second, that abyss would open, beckoning. I had these two great aunts who uh, were so great that they didn't feel like great aunts. They felt like just regular aunts. They felt like my mom's sisters. Um, and they had interesting names. And they just passed away. In the last five years, I lost both of them. Um, and they are really kind of like the, the, the poets of my family, I think. Um, the unwritten poets. This is called Suki. My great aunt squash gourds for titties, went to Atlantic City monthly, came back with ashtrays made into ornate vaginas, tossed a head of jerry curls, sipped molasses black coffee with rum, told me menstruation was regal, said I was a southern gal, had to keep my kudamaya tight for a real man, had no shame ever, no babies, just her knickknacks, but I swear, and that old wedding picture, her thighs inflamed in garnet nylons, she looked fertile as all hell. <laughs> Aunt Tab's funeral. Woke up this morning, decided to wear a fuchsia dress to your final gig, turtleneck, cashmere, belted and snug. I dared some old biddy to say something. I felt you admiring my shape. You were always into shapes, curves, womanly dimensions that couldn't fit in a cousin bit often. The men got in a fight outside the club, while the old heads told your dirty stories, rolled your flaws in papers dipped in memory shine from the Shenandoah. I saw your shape, Marlboro smoke round your temples, walking home down Maple Street.